Welcome to the Ultimate Saigon Street Food Tour compilation video. I'm Evan from Noodlehead and I'm here to show you the best cheap Vietnamese food that this city has to offer. Saigon is a vibrant, chaotic, and delicious place where you can find amazing dishes on every corner, from pho to bang mi to bun cha. In this video, I'll show you my favorite local street stalls from a month of eating in Saigon, a food lover's paradise. Have a look for yourself. Wow. It's in perfect temperature. We're trying a bak sua. This is it, the infamous yogurt coffee. We are on the back of the bike in downtown Saigon. I'm headed to get some of the best Kong Ga fried chicken in all of Vietnam. Don't forget to subscribe and like, support the channel. I'm Evan and this is Doodle Edge. I'm at Kong Ga Soi Moi Sua Sua and we're gonna answer the question you've been waiting all day to find out through the whole video. Who makes the best fried chicken in Vietnam? All right, so everyone knows the rules. One bite, one taste, once and only. We have three criteria we're going by. The crunch. This one has a pretty beautiful crunch. It actually looks the most like bon chon out of everything we've had. Not that like flaky cornflake kind of crust. As far as looks go, I mean, it doesn't get more beautiful than this when you have a piece of fried chicken. This is also scalding hot. As some of you know, I used to be a cook, so I, I got kind of bulletproof fingers, which helps because I'm clumsy. I have a feeling it's gonna be like a sweet garlic kind of action. Here it goes, first bite, the win. Oh, wow, yeah. Absolutely delicious. I don't think it even needs the sauce. The sauce has a little bit of a soy punch. Unbelievable, it's so juicy and moist inside. Absolutely delicious. Wow, where's the weight? No contest, a little bit greasy, but incredible innovative method of Showering the chicken in hot oil just gives it this impeccable and perfect coating. Wow. Just lightly seasoned. Again, it's like a sweet soy sauce. I don't even need the sauce. The chicken is so good. And most importantly, because we're in Vietnam, we need pom. Unlike the despicable foreign fast food places, you get yourself a real serving of rice here. Mm. Oh, yeah. Look at that. A single drip of oil, skin flaking right off, absolute beauty. Keep in mind, this isn't breaded. This crust is just from the oil, the intense heat. Nice bit of garlic there too. Look at that. So sweet of the locals. Just for us, so we can tease sunny side and the best ever food review show. They included delicious cucumbers. Mm. As the Vietz would say, yum. Absolutely delicious. It is yum. Yum, yum, yum. Mam, mam, mam. I don't think there's any question. We've got our answer. The best fried chicken in the whole country of Vietnam is being made right here at Kong Ga Soi Moi Sua Sua, District 1, Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City. Outside of Bang Mi Huim Hoa, which is the busiest bang mi spot in Saigon. It is super famous, two separate locations. Over here is where the drivers come to pick stuff up. Over there is where you gotta line up if you wanna get something to eat. So I'm gonna go over there. Wow, Chet Oi from bang mi. <laughs> Never actually eaten here before. I've been down past the line a bunch. This is actually not that bad. There's like a, some days this lineup will stretch like all the way back down the street into the corner. The story of Bang Mi started in the 1950s when a couple from Hanoi moved to Saigon and opened a shop selling stuffed bread rolls. They named their sandwich after their hometown, Hua Ma. Soon it became the most popular Vietnamese street food. Bang Mi is a result of French influence in Vietnam, combining crusty baguette with soft pate, luscious mayo. The combination of accompaniments should pop with layers of flavors ranging from salty, sweet, sour to spicy. You see the prices up there? They're actually pretty expensive for Bang Mi's, but they're selling them en masse. Xin chào, toi mon mot Bang Mi dak bet. So one Bang Mi was 65K, so about $3 US. All right, y'all, that is more like it. We are at Bang Mi Huyen Hoa. We finally got a serious sandwich. We're gonna try out the real thing here. This isn't a Big Mac, it's not a burger. We're in Vietnam, and this is the Bang Mi Huyen Hoa. Beautiful in there, you can see it is stuffed with pork liver pate, shoulder ham, a little bit of bologna. We're getting traffic passing by us here. We are sitting at a sidewalk cafe. It is seriously stuffed. You can see there's a thick layer of the bologna, the ham as well. Interestingly, they actually serve the pickles and the toppings separately in the sandwich, probably because it's so overstuffed. It's heavy on the meat. It looks delicious. I don't know yet, but I, I think it's gonna take out the Big Mac. It looks like Vietnam's gonna win this round again, but we're gonna have to wait and see if there's any more surprises. Let's load this thing up. All right, you ready? Let's do it. 
Oh my God, that is a serious mouthful. A big hit of pepper from the cold pressed meat. Wow. I wonder if it's from Food Clock. There's full whole peppercorns in here. And as I'm biting into it, I'm getting the crunch and the spice. It's delicious. Wow. This is a serious mouthful. Just by weight, a half of this sandwich is at least a quarter pounder of meat, maybe even a half pounder. I'm like literally trying to guard our microphone from the traffic noise, but we're just gonna have to deal with it. If you want real street food, you gotta be on the street. Oh, that is so good. Worth all $3, worth the 65K. It is stuffed with pate and it's so fatty and so rich. Pure chicken liver. Mm, wow, there's a mongrel dog here and this is a mongrel of a sandwich. It is out of control. In five years in Vietnam, I've never actually bothered waiting in line. This sandwich is worth it. It's absolutely delicious. My wife didn't want to come wait with me, so I'm filming by myself today. The question becomes, is this other half of the sandwich wife worthy or should I just go all out and eat it by myself? Mm, oh my goodness, look at these. Where are you, sunny side? Oh, look at that cucumber. Mm. So crunchy and delicious. Wow, Mark Weens, eat your heart out. I should have asked for extra cucumber. I made a real mistake there. The crunchiness really adds to the experience. Oh, I mean, I'm kind of play acting here, but legitimately it, it gets a lot better with the cucumber. It really adds a crunch and a brightness to it. We need to eat our vegetables today. Coffee. At the time there was a milk shortage and even the canned condensed milk was hard to get a hold of here, let alone fresh milk. So he came up with this incredible idea of using egg yolks beaten with condensed milk and butter. It's extremely rich, an over the top and vivacious drink with a great mouthfeel. That warm water there around the outside here is keeping the coffee warm as we drink it, but it's just at the perfect temperature, like a classic double boiler, the way you'd melt chocolate or something like that. So it's not gonna cook it and it's not gonna go cold and you need to have it at that consistent, perfect temperature for it to stay drinkable the entire time. This is it, folks, the infamous Cafe Chung of Vietnam. Uh, okay, come on, thank you. Wow. So this is incredible. This is the famous Cafe Chung. So it was invented by Mr. Hyang in Hanoi in the 40s. He famously had to come up with something he could do to replace dairy, because there's no dairy in the country at the time. And he had this incredible idea to whip up and blend an egg yolk and sugar with the foam. Obviously, you can see it's in double boiler, so it's sitting in hot water here so that the egg doesn't cook. It's an incredible drink, very unique to Vietnam. You're not gonna get this anywhere else. It's a little bit of thickness. Woo. This is the Cafe Chung. Let's give it a try. Okay, it's like not quite an omelet, but it's there's a lot of mouthfeel there. There's some serious thickness. It's also really salty. So this is a savory coffee drink. And if you're just here visiting, if you are a tourist from out of town coming to Ho Chi Minh or passing through Vietnam, this is an absolute must try. Uh, we can go here. Yeah. Oh, hey, over all right, so we just started off with some pickled chicken feet from the auntie up there. They're nice and deboned. You get a bit, little camera there? Let's flip it around. All right, these look pretty tasty. The smell's not too strong. I think this is just cut beer. So it's lime leaf, lemongrass, spicy fresh chili, pickled, and a little bit of that green melon. Just get that. Oh wow, a lot of lemongrass, really fresh flavor. Mm. And again, they've been deboned. This is like the equivalent of going and getting like chicken nuggets. The texture is a bit much for some people, but I'm into it. It kind of reminds me of Mexican style pig skin, like what you get in a bar where you get pickled chicharron down there. Mm. Overall good flavor, I don't know. She looking, she's super friendly, but let's be real, like soft six out of 10. All right. This one had the fermented hot sauce on it. It tastes, uh, ooh, it's spicy. It's got some kick and it's actually fresh chili. 
it's not made from the ketchup style chili sauce that you get so much in Vietnam. So hopefully it tastes good and there's not too, too much Saigon sugar. Ooh, that's much better. The spicy one got a little action in it. Tastes delicious. They stood uh, could knock off buffalo chicken wings. Next up on deck. Getting a real front of the mouth kick there. Auntie just came over and scolded me for not using her nook jam, which is the green seafood sauce. You can see it here. Ooh. That smells like intense fresh green chilies. A little bit of cilantro, maybe a little bit of calamansi. Like the, uh... oh yeah, there's calamansi in there. It's not lime. <laughs> and it is hot. That's legit fire. All right, let's get that right in there. Cover it up. Oh my God, it just got in my eye. Wow. Wow. What a stupid foreigner. We're not gonna count this out. We're leaving the hot sauce in the eye segment in for sure. Oh man, absolutely delicious. Pickled chicken feet. I know mom off camera wants me to shut up because she loves chicken feet, they're her favorite. And that's why we started with them. So she's just wondering why I keep blabbing so much. Oh, mm. oh yeah. Nung, yeah, nung. Yeah, super good, really tasty. Much better, the nook jam. Yeah, yeah, no. Oh, it's so much better with the sauce. I take back everything I said. With the nook charm, it's a solid eight out of 10. These are delicious. You want one, mama? This soup is our love interest, darling of the Southern region, a beauty born of the Mekong River. Cambodians brought this recipe to Southern Vietnam via boat along the Mekong River, where it was called Hu Tu Nam Vang, Nam Pen Hu Tu. Did you know that Hu Tu is also a dish rich with history and cultural diversity? It was introduced to Cambodia by Chinese immigrants in Phnom Penh, where it became known as Khu Tev. We are at Hu Tu Thai, and you can see this one has a beautiful piece of shrimp sitting on top. I've actually peeled the shrimp too, which is a rarity here in Vietnam. It looks beautiful, fully dressed, tail on. It yeah, has a piece of liver thin, almost glass-like noodle. They could be like an angel. I bought a quail egg down here. Can I hold this with the chopsticks? Yes, I can. This is a kind of chili oil, I believe made with lemongrass. So we got a blend of like lemongrass, garlic, fresh chili in here. I'm excited to eat it, but there's a serious issue. The issue is that I think it costs 65K, which is almost $3 US, which means we are dangerously close to going over budget for the day. We're trying our hardest to get our five Vietnamese street food dishes, hit all those noodle dishes for under the price of a single McDonald's combo, and we're cutting close. We're gonna have to get our last noodle dish in for maybe a dollar to get everything mixed up in there, looking delicious. Start with the star of the show. Big bite of that beautiful shrimp. Mm, beautiful, sweet white meat. Oh yeah, the broth's the star here. Oh yeah, there's some pork in there. Definitely some nook mom, some fermented fish sauce. Gorgeous light soup, freshened up by those spring onions and that lemongrass chili concoction. Everything's been great today so far. The food's absolutely fantastic. Vietnamese street food's amazing. And Vietnamese noodle soups in general are really bright, really clear, easy to eat, easy to digest. There's a reason why this is the least obese country on the planet. Even if I'm gonna lose my challenge, stick around to the end to find out. It's an incredible deal for under $3. Wonderful taste. Comment below, let me know what you think of the challenge. Am I gonna make it to the fifth noodle dish? Can I find one for, let's do the math. 120, 90, 210. I think the last dish needs to come in at 25K or less. I might have to do some searching, but I have faith. I'm gonna find Another plate of incredible Vietnamese noodles for under 25K or $1. I set out to conquer McDonald's. And you're going down McDonald's on Vietnamese Independence Day. 
the Cafe Suida or ice milk coffee. This is the most popular type of coffee in Vietnam and you see it absolutely everywhere. It originates from the French colonial period. The brewing method is quite simple. The grounds are tightly packed in this metal filter known as the fin. And once the boiling water has been poured over and the coffee is dripped slowly, the glass has been prepped with a layer of sweetened condensed milk, which waits at the bottom. It's mixed together, often with the addition of ice or da, and this creates that beautiful, attractive caramel brown color. It's rich, sweet, and creamy, and extremely strong. So this is the most famous of all Vietnamese coffee drinks, the Cafe Suida. It is Cafe Fin, which is like a, the strong, thick, drip coffee, and it's on top of condensed milk. And the condensed milk is, I mean, as you imagine it, like Rooster Brand or whatever you see at home, it is just like pure sugar. And this comes from a time when it was a lot harder to get fresh dairy, back during the American War and the embargo, pre doi moi, and this stuff is ridiculously sweet. It is insanely sugary. You want to have a little, a little bit less sugar, you ask for it, it don't. It's as sweet as this city is loud. It's a good coffee, but it's known basically for being a double hit. It's like this speedball of coffee, right? You're getting cocaine and heroin, caffeine and sugar, full blast, in your face, this may be like the sixth coffee I've had today, but we're gonna keep the industry secrets to ourselves. <sighs> That's delicious. So this, is bang hue, which essentially is a little rice cake. They're little circular rice cakes, almost like silver dollar style pancakes. And they're layered up with some beautiful fermented sausage. This is, I believe, a bang home, which is like a steamed shrimp. There's a whole shrimp in this thing. Let's have a look at this. Hiding in there, absolutely gorgeous. Finished with some pork floss. Looks like there's a big dumpling on top there too as well as another fish cake. And all of this pork floss is gonna act like seasoning. It's served with a wonderful dipping sauce that's gonna be a traditional nook mom, so a sweetened version of fish sauce with a little bit of chili. Let's go for the first bite of this bang hue. Mmm, wow. It's so light. And the rice has been pounded. There's no wheat flour in this and rather than having a chemical reaction or a rise a kind of fermentation it's literally elbow grease it's just the human power that bounces this and creates a new texture by pounding the rice and it's a wonderful mm. wow ethereal gorgeous stuff here so light so tasty mm. Oh, I'm just saying everything is light, and then look at this. This is a dense ball. This is like a mochi. Let's get a look at this. See this? Wow. Look at that texture. I need my hands here to show this off. It is beautiful. Pull that right out. And there's a little round something in there. A little surprise in the middle. I think it's going to be a quail egg. Let's have a bite and see what's inside there. Mmm. I was wrong. Mmm. Oh. It's mung bean paste. So, stuff in the middle of this glutinous mochi ball type thing. I don't actually know what it's called. I'm going to have to find out. Maybe if you know what this is called, let me know in the comments. It's just like a mochi ball, but inside there's a savory, like, filling of mung bean paste. Mmm. <laughs> wow. In all my time in Vietnam, I've never had anything like this. I'm glad we saved it till the end. It is delicious. So, another fish cake here. Oh, this bang play is making my day. It's also a little. Mm. It looks like we have another one in here, layered with a little bit of seasoned ground pork. 
That's just a guess. I'll have to let you know what it is for sure. Nope. Oh, gonna close up there. Notice? I didn't even notice. Oh my god, guys. They gave me the fork treatment. I didn't notice. I got forked. I got foisted with a fork. Oh, wow. That is so, so delicious. Incredible light texture. I can't believe they have a fork. And they gave it to me. Should I be insulted about the fork? You let me know in the comments. Your boy knows to use chopsticks. Gee, you tricked me. <laughs> Not humored by the experience. They were kind enough to let me film in the kitchen though, so I absolutely appreciate being here. So much gratitude to Bun Bo Hui Dong Bai. If you're ever in Saigon, make sure to come down to Dakao. Mm. Try this out. This is a just a spectacular surprise at the meal. No. No. Yeah, it's delicious. It's got a fermented pork. So this is only cooked through fermentation, similar to like a salami. And then we're gonna wrap it up with one of these little rice pancakes. Mmm. Oh, so good. Mmm. There's everything you want. There's sweetness, there's saltiness, savory, a little bit of umami from the fermentation. And then, bang, there's pepper and heat, high, spicy. Oh, so good. Mm. I gotta say, this Bang Hui, after literally eating one of the best bowls of soup, if not the best bowl of soup in the world, blows my mind. That they can be putting out two dishes of this quality and this caliber from one little kitchen back there is a testament to these aunties, to their skill and their cooking. Yeah. Mm. Before I wrap up and finish with the Bang Hui though, why don't you let me know what I should eat next time in Vietnam? Put a comment below, subscribe, like. What do you think? Is it too good to be true? What do you guys think? Is this it? Is this our ticket to winning? I'm gonna call this cucumber Sunny. This one's for you, Sunnyside. I grew up on a street called Sunnyside Avenue. For real. Not like you and your weird fake name. Wow, this is amazing. Check this out. Boon Dao for 26K. Have I done the math right? 25K, the sign outside. It's got a few unique things about it. Obviously right up the top you can see these noodles. So they're cooked and then they're compressed into like a cube. So they're basically dippable. And then the other important thing, along with the fried tofu, fresh herbs, and the cucumbers, Eat your heart out, sunny side. Cucumbers are delicious and they're good for you. This is the infamous Mam Tom that makes Boon Dao special. It's a fermented shrimp paste, hence the Mam Tom, like literally shrimp sauce. And you whip it up and it starts to froth. Now we're getting a little bit of acid in there. Oh, and it's pungent. Heavy, heavy, heavy sting here. So it's stronger even than Nook Mom, stronger than fish sauce. It's like when people try and go fishing on TV and then you never catch a fish. Woo, there it is, oxygenating and the acid is basically working as a catalyst and setting it off. Whew. Smells deep. That is a lot of funk. I love it. Have a look inside that tofu. It is so soft, juicy, and tender on the inside. Beautifully crunchy on the outside. Sub like all that stuff. We're eating a one dollar plate of Boon Dao in Vietnam. Nowhere else in the world could you get food like this for this price and this level of quality and deliciousness. And most of all, I haven't quite done the total up, but I think we might have won here. I think we might have beat McDonald's. Uh, five meals for under the price of a single McDonald's combo. Oh, come on. Okay, 50, 45 is 95, plus 60, I'm bad at math, is 155. Then we went to Hutu, and it was another 65, 60. So that's 215. Oh, game over. We lost, I lost by like 4K. I thought I won.
goes really well with cucumbers. We eat cucumbers on this show. Because it's the best food review show ever, we don't discriminate against green food. We eat cucumbers here. Mm. Let's go. All right, Vietnam. Next challenge, 11 million more subs. Wait, a year, two years? This is actually delicious. I'm kind of gross. I'm still eating it. This is the fifth bowl of noodles or plate of noodles I've had today. 2023. You can't make that up. Like, where else in the world can you get an incredible, beautiful, healthy meal? Well, thank God. I got worried for a minute and thought it was vegetarian. It's not vegetarian because it's covered in shrimp sauce. Uh, mind the noise a little bit. We are at a traditional Vietnamese street side cafe right on the river and the highway in District 4. We're about to try a cafe fin, so we'll show you a little bit about that process again. I'll get right into it. This is a strong, thick, slowly drip coffee with a very high caffeine content. I'm excited to try it. This is sort of the original Viet coffee. The most traditional way that Viets enjoy this coffee is known as the cafe fin process. It's a traditional method of brewing coffee that involves a slow drip. They use a metal filter called a fin, which is placed over a mug or glass. The coffee grounds are added to the fin and then hot water is poured over them. Because the coffee's been compressed, the water drips very slowly through the coffee, creating a brew that's extremely high in caffeine content, as the contact process is quite lengthy. This method produces a strong, rich cup of coffee, akin to a Turkish coffee or a stronger espresso. All right, so this is as basic and traditional as it gets. This is what's known as the cafe fin. As you can see, it's a little metal filter system. Coffee inside, metal filter. Almost like a drip coffee or a standard. It takes a little longer to make though, so the grinds are done really fine and you end up with a very thick, intense, strong black coffee. That's why so many of these other Vietnamese coffee drinks are mixed with condensed milk, with sugar, with egg, with so many dairy products. Because this drink traditionally is very thick and very strong. This particular one doesn't look that strong. Served with sugar and cha, a little hot tea. Sometimes you can also get a cha da, which is an ice version. You can have an ice version of a cafe fin, known as a cafe den da, which just means black coffee with ice. Let's see how it goes. That's actually really good. <laughs> Classic Vietnam coming through in the clutch. So it's a robusta bean, it's dark, it's a little roasty, a little bit of chocolate flavor, a little bit of burnt flavor on the end there. That's nice, I could drink like six of these, seriously. Let's get to it though, let's get into some of the more complex drinks. Let's head to our next spot. Predator. It actually it smells pretty delicious though. It's like a nice soft white meat. She boiled it up for about five or 10 minutes and then hit it on the grill, like flame kissed, finished it off with some classic Viet seafood style finishing. So there's scallion oil on top as well as some peanuts and fried shallots. And then this is nook cam, which is like a spicy green chili sauce. I think we should just get it all the way in there and eat the whole thing. I'm, I'm excited to dig into this. It looks pretty meaty. I just got, I got like a cut eye from an auntie. There's not a lot of flesh. Ooh, wow. It's yummy. The flesh that's there is really soft and tender. Like you can see it's not a lot. Let's get the camera up on the face. All right, get in there for the close-up. As you can see, we're, we're not a lot of flesh there. There's actually a, a paucity of meat. I feel like I'm gonna be able to eat a whole lot more after this. It looks like, almost like squid meat, but it's a bit tender, like lobster style. So let's eat this thing, mama. Mm. It's absolutely delicious. I mean, I do love seafood. Hi, Emma. It's not quite oystery, but it's a really tender, soft meat, and I like it. Bring on the sea beetles. Mm. It doesn't have the buttery sweetness of lobster or crab, 
it's much closer, I think, to like a really soft steamed uh, squid or something. Like the flavor of a squid of like very, very subtle sea flavor, a little bit of salt, but almost no texture. It's uh, smooth and creamy, unless you choke on a peanut, in which case it's a dark crack. Mm. I think I'm just gonna eat this whole thing. Do you want some of this, Mama? Should I save you some? She seems hesitant. I kinda like it. I'm into it. I would eat more of these, but let's have a reality check right now. This thing costs 270K, which is like $13, $14 US. And for $13 or $14 US, you could literally have like five to 10 meals in Saigon or like a hundred different things in the street food. But we're on our $100 challenge here. We're trying to get there. The pickled chicken feet were $4. The sting was $1. Oh, that's not very good. So we're only at $5. And then this thing's $4. Well, we're at $19. We're getting there. We're one fifth of the way to $100. I think I can do it. Take that sunny side. Mm. Oh yeah. Look at this goobery stuff. It's like fishy guts. Oh yeah. I'm into it. Are you sure you don't want some? It's kinda nice, it's like eating a fish head. If you've ever eaten fish brains or anything inside a fish head, it's like that. Kinda like a mixed textural bag, but it tastes really good. So we just got school about the legs. We gotta eat these, yeah? Koi mm. moon Ooh, I'm not gonna, there's not a lot of meat in there, but we can suck these out. This is like, uh, if you ever like picked honeysuckle and suckled on them, you're getting like a slight whiff of uh, seafood. Mm. Okay. He also told us to dig out these shells, so, you know, when in Rome, let's get it guys. Mm. But it's got that old school Saigon charm. Let's get into it right now. We're gonna try a bak sua. The bak sua, similar to the ice milk coffee, is made with a little less coffee and a little more condensed milk. Bak sua literally means little milk from Cantonese. And the Chinese were the first to drink this type of coffee, Saigon. So it originates from the Cholon or Chinatown district of- We're trying a fairly traditional drink, but at a much more modern sort of third wave, newer type of cafe. We're trying a bak sua today, which is basically a milk coffee. It actually has real fresh milk. The product is not as common as the sua da. Generally though, when you order one, you do get a little bit of condensed milk in it to get that classic sweetness. So let's mix her up and give it a try. Beautiful caramel latte color. And that's good. That's balanced nicely. So as I said, they roast their own beans here at Hof. There's just a touch of sweetness, like real restraint. It tastes delicious. I mean, I could, I could literally drink these all day and to be honest, I do. 
Oh, that's nice. They're also, you can tell, they're using Arabica beans. So there is some Ar Arabica grown now in Vietnam, up in the Dilat region. It's becoming more popular, obviously, as this third wave of coffee takes hold, but it's still not the go-to. And certainly the, the main product being exported, the traditional Vietnamese coffee, is still Robusta. It's over 80% of the cash crop here in the country. Pho Bo is the most famous Vietnamese noodle dish, consisting of rice noodles and a fragrant beef broth, topped with slices of brisket, fresh herbs, and bean sprouts. But do you know the history and origin of this delicious soup? Pho Bo was born in the northern province of Nam Dinh, southeast of Hanoi, in the early 20th century, during the French colonial period. It was influenced by Chinese and French cuisines as rice noodles and spices were imported, and beef became more available. The dish was originally sold by street vendors who carried mobile kitchens on bamboo poles called gam pho. It quickly became popular among workers and locals who loved its rich balance and flavor. It's considered the national dish and a symbol of culture and identity. The perfect food to have today on Independence Day. So we're at Pho Yen here and we're going to be trying our first dish, the mainstay, the classic Pho Bo. It looks absolutely delicious. You can see the nice onion here as well as the beef finish with a bit of spring onion. It's going to get some basil and bean sprouts in there, stir it up a little bit. It's a classic. We're gonna get a little bit of chili in there. I like it spicy, so we are gonna get some chili in there. Nice hero shot of our beef here. Here it is, first bite. Mmm, oh my God, it's good. And it's really spicy. <laughs> That's a lot. Wow, delicious. I mean, this is why it's the best. I'm gonna put a little bit of lime in there now. Ooh, look at that. Wow, it's a nice hearty broth. Really beautiful stuff there. The broth is really nice, light, gorgeous, gorgeous. Oh, and we know it's full of collagen from all those beef bones. We can get the full experience. Oh my God. This is why we started with the Fubba. It never disappoints. I know we're street side here again, literally sitting on the classic red stools on the floor, but what a bowl of soup and an incredible way to start your day. Classic Vietnamese breakfast here, a bowl of pho bo. It's a traditional Vietnamese noodle soup, very popular Vietnamese street food. So our first bowl of pho, uh, the first bowl of Vietnamese noodle soup costs only 50K. That's a little over $2. The broth for Bun Bo Hue is prepared by slowly simmering various types of beef and pork bones, oxtail, shank, neck bones, pork feet, knuckles, jowls, and hocks. Loads of lemongrass, fiery spices, and frying up garlic, shallot, red pepper flake, and chili powder with some fermented shrimp paste. The noodles are thick and cylindrical, unlike the thin and flat ones used for pho. The toppings include crab cakes, pork blood cakes, rare and cooked sliced beef, as well as pork legs. The soup served with a plate of fresh herbs and vegetables, such as lettuce, Vietnamese basil, banana flowers, fish mint, and bean sprouts. Time to eat. I'm Evan, this is Noodlehead. We're at Bong Bo Hue Dong Ba in the heart of Saigon's Dakao district. There's some beautiful food we're gonna to try today. So we're gonna start off with the Bong Bo Hue Dak Viet, which is basically like a everything all in one dish. That's Thick slices of beautiful beef brisket, as well as some nice onion, a crab, cake, soup. A little bit of sliced onion on the top there, as well as some beautiful scallions to finish it off. This also looks like it has a pork knuckle in it. This is one of the most famous dishes in Vietnam. A lot of people have been requesting that I go and try and eat this. It looks lovely. You can see the thick pork skin on top there. Let's have a look at that beef as well. Beautiful stuff. This is a chakua, which is uh, essentially like a snakehead fish that's been turned into a cake or a kind of sausage. They call it a cake, but essentially it's a sausage. It's like a hand-pressed meat, often folded in a banana leaf. And then this is our beautiful little crab cake ball here as well. So this soup is gonna be absolutely delicious. And make sure you stick around to the end. There's also a surprise, a dish I've been trying to get my hands on and in my mouth for ages in Vietnam. It's a specialty of Hue. Stick around to the end to find out about that surprise as well. But for now, let's get started with this incredible looking bowl of soup. 
also classic, of course, in Vietnam. We get the herbs there, so there's some Vietnamese basil as well as some shredded, uh, this is banana leaf, I believe, shredded banana leaf. And then right at the bottom, we have a whole bunch of fresh, crunchy looking, beautiful bean sprouts. Bean sprouts, so we're gonna get some of those in there as well. I cannot wait to dig into this place. This is one of my favorite dishes, and I've never been here to try their version. So let's check it out. And get the lime squeeze in there. Mm, succulent, citrusy, beautiful. And then it looks like we have a nice dry chili. So we're gonna get some of that on top, make it spicy, a little bit of kai. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Evan, this is Noodlehead and Kung Noodlehead. Let's go. Bun Bo Hue. Everybody knows the rules. First bite's the one that counts. We're gonna start with the beef brisket. Oh yeah, that is delicious. Beautiful slow cooked. Gotta look at these noodles as well too. Nice gelatinous noodle. Almost like, not so much a vermicelli, more like something similar akin to an udon. It's a thick, like a number six spaghetti or something. Big round tubular noodles. Mm. Oh yeah. You can really taste the lemongrass, the chili. Oh, incredible broth. Oh yeah, wow. This one is slurpable. You gotta get in there for it. And it is spicy, no joking. It is legitimately hot. Mm. When you get that nice first bite, of the Vietnamese basil. I'm actually breaking out sweating. This is legitimately spicy. A bit rare for Vietnam. Often you don't get a lot of spicy food. So this central region dish coming from Hue, it does have a bit of kick to it. It's a nice surprise. It's a twist from what you have in uh, Ho Chi Minh City for sure. And that herb just balances right out with the heat. So a little the yin, the yang, hot and cold, cooling. Mm. Let's get in on this fish cake. This is nice looking. They're made in house. I saw them doing back there. Get a close up of that and then let's have a bite. Oh yeah. Mm. Nicely seasoned, bit of pepper. Mm. There's black pepper in there. This is an absolute wonderful bowl of soup. As some of you may know, Anthony Bourdain literally called Fun Bo Hue the best soup in the world. So obviously, the man, the myth, the legend, he liked it, it's good enough for me. Mm. Wow. The punch, the citrusy punch of the lemongrass is absolutely fantastic. Mm. Let's get a close look here at this delicious broth. Wow, it is really spicy. This is definitely what brings that punch. You can see a nice layer just glistening on top. A little bit of fat rising. Oh, beautiful. Ah. Mm. Chewy, bouncy, wonderful textural mouthfeel on the noodles. And this beef is just perfectly cooked. Let's get another. Another little money shot of this slice. Oh yeah. Get in there. Oh my goodness. This is fantastic. We're gonna have to eat this whole bowl right now. I should just shut up and eat. Finally, Boon Cha, the catalyst. A dish from Northern Vietnam and especially the capital city, Hanoi. Boon Cha has a long history and cultural significance in Hanoi. It was first described by a famous food writer in 1959. It became internationally known in 2016 when President Obama and Anthony Bourdain enjoyed it. To make Boon Cha, you need to prepare meat, noodles, dipping sauce, the pickled vegetables, and fresh herbs. The meat's minced pork shoulder and belly, which is seasoned with fish sauce, nook mom, garlic, a lemongrass, white pepper, and rice wine. 
This dish is the heart and soul of Vietnam. Vietnam. All right, so we're here at Bun Cha Hanoi Sua. Even though we're in Saigon, we're trying to mix it up today, get five Vietnamese street food dishes and to get them under that 236K price. That's our goal to get under 10 bucks is 60K. So it's almost $3. We've got some fresh chili flakes. We'll hit a couple of those in there. Not too much though. These are often dangerous in Vietnam. Not a ghost pepper, but they're, they're hot. They're like a Thai bird chili. Fries, ooh, a little bit of pickled ginger, pickled chili. Get a couple of those in there to finish it off and that'll just brighten it up. This is not a soup. This is more of a dipping sauce. We've got a whole array here of fresh herbs. So we got previous sauce. We're gonna put it right in there with the dish. We're gonna rip this up and put it right in there with the dish. This is a calamansi, so it's a little bit sweeter than a lime. Almost like an orange lime blend. This meat plate with scrumptious. It's so good. Oh, fatty, just bursting with flavor. This is the uh, proper traditional Hanoian feast. The broth here, Unlike really the light, dishes, almost pickly. You can really taste the nook mom, the fish sauce. A little bit of garlic, pickled carrot, pickled, uh, probably Asian pear, I guess. Yeah. What do you think, wife? Taikon. Wrong again, foreign white guy. Everybody's favorite thing, bacon. If you're vegan, change the channel right now. No, I'm just kidding. If enough vegans comment on this video, hi mom, I'm looking at you. I'll go to Hutu Chai place. And Chai is like Buddhist food, so they're basically vegetarian. Lots of the foreigners call it a uh, vegan pho. Yeah, Maybe we'll check right it out. If a hundred of you ask me to eat vegan food, I'll, I'll concede and I'll do it. But for now, bacon time. We paid dearly for this. Wow, not too sharp. And the meat is perfectly cooked. The fat is rendered right out of it. You don't get any chewy texture at all. Wow, just got one of those bird chilies. That is a kick you in the face bit of heat. Obviously, I'm sweating like a dog. We turned the fans off because we don't want to mess up the audio. Just for you, right? We're suffering. Suffering through five bowls of delicious Vietnamese noodle soup. Look at that fat dripping. Wait for it. Oh, yeah. Really loudly. It's called Hop Vi Lom. <laughs> which definitely is a bad word. I know you know what I'm talking about, Ting Viet people. So let's go get it. Let's go eat some loam. Over a boiling vat of quail and duck fetuses. I'm gonna keep embarrassing my wife every single time I say it long. So I'm just gonna start saying B or home B, which means like duck eggs. And we won't say the last part because it also means the bad word for lady bits. All right, you ready? So this is our final challenge here. We're gonna get in. We're gonna get after that balut, that duck egg embryo. Xin chào anh. It actually looks pretty delicious. They're boiling them up in a tamarind sauce with a little bit of chili. So we can get some a little, with some oat or some kai, get that spicy sauce in it. And hopefully we enjoy this. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit scared. I've never actually eaten these duck embryos. I grew up a vegetarian too. So this is some kind of sacrilege for me and my family. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna be going over to the dark side of eggs. Do I, can I order from this guy here? Yes. Yeah. Do you want high? High to be? Yeah. So one blend, one with the tamari sauce. Oh, oh yeah, okay, wow. Yeah. Very, uh... Hot meat, long. Salmi, nook mom. Sate. Uh huh. Are you recording still? Yeah, I know. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, Mot, meat, vong sate. And which Oh, yeah, just write it down. And which one is the tamarind sauce? Me or me? This, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna have one with the tamarind sauce and one with the spicy saute sauce. And we're gonna eat ourselves a bunch of duck egg embryos. Let's get it. Come on, Ang. They just blanch them or parboil them a little bit so they're cooked through. And then they're basically just finishing these in the sauce, the same way you would like a pasta or anything like that, right? You're gonna parboil the pasta and then you're gonna get after it with a little bit of saute. So those are our beautiful duck egg embryos right there. They're actually kind of big. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like a little bit of a little bit of something in the pit of my stomach here. I might, I might struggle with this one. 
My wife's gonna think it's hilarious because she doesn't like eating lots of the weird stuff I eat, but she lo actually loves these and we'll just chow on them if this is their normal snack. We're gonna go overhead here on this guy. Okay, Angoy is hitting that with the sweet nook mum. So that was fish sauce with a little bit of sugar and some oil in it as well. And I think he's gonna finish some of these off with the peanuts. All very classic Viet dishes here. A little bit of herbs on the side. I mean, the number of things that are cooked this way in Vietnam is kind of countless. Like they're just basic variations on a sauce with the protein. There you go. Two duck eggs, get a little of the greenery on the side. We are ready to go, folks. You double dog dare me. I hope that sauce has tons of sugar, super Saigon style. All right. Mmm. Mom off camera is actually getting excited for this stuff because she thinks it's so yummy looking. Meanwhile, my stomach is like nodding up. My stomach looks exactly like one of these duck embryos right now. And I don't think it feels any better either. I've eaten a whole lot of sea urchin. Infamous duck embryo, duck aid, known as balut in the Philippines or Honvit Lom. She's still laughing. The wife is, she's still laughing at me, so I must be saying it wrong. I, uh, I'm not gonna lie, I don't think I've ever been this afraid to eat any kind of street food. I'm not that into the bugs and things like that in Mexico, although I will eat the, oh God. Should I just do this? What's it gonna taste like? Is it gross? Is it like a disgusting boiled egg? Wow, that's a bad wow. Uh, wow, I in intensely just like that. That's, um, can I have a piece this big? Does this count? My wife thinks it's really funny that I almost hurled. I've eaten a lot of street food today too, and sting. Well, that's a definite fail. Um, I'm definitely done. I can't, I can't handle it. Do you really like this? She really likes eating these? I mean, everyone's eating them, so people must like eating them. I can't, it's so gross. <laughs> what if I eat the peanut? Does the peanut count as eating it? I can't, I can't, like looking at the feathers, I can't even do it. Well, Vietnam, I'm sorry. No one watches to the end of YouTube videos anyways, so no one is seeing me fail miserably, but. There's feathers in there. I don't mind the feathers, the feathers are better. It's the like, overcooked, gamey egg yolk part. And it, let's just say it, it looks like a testicle. It looks like a testicle and it doesn't taste good. Well, I don't know, maybe it's, oh, it's like, there's bones in there. You gotta like, I mean, I like bones. I don't know what's up with this. You really gotta, I can see the skull too. You see it's little birdie egg skull in there. But it's, none of this makes sense. I don't mind eating fish eyes. I'll suck on a fish's skull. I don't know why. It's fine, you know what? I think I'm coming back. It's fine. This is a solid five out of 10. This is um, right up there with like stale bar peanuts for good drinking snacks. And that's probably only because it has peanuts in it. Did we order four of these? Next up, we have Cafe Yua.
the coconut coffee. Two of the most famous export products of Vietnam, which everyone loves domestically as well. The method is to mix the coconut with milk and condensed milk and crushed ice and, and you add the coffee last. This is really a dessert product. I mean, I can't imagine the calorie count, but you sprinkle some dried sugar coated coconut on top for that extra crunchy bite. This is like the 7-Eleven. One of my favorite drinks you can get in Ho Chi Minh. This is the Cafe Ko Yua from Kong Cafe. It's not exactly traditional. I mean, it's definitely Vietnamese. Everyone drinks these things. It's a really popular chain. You can find them all the way from Hanoi to Ha Long Bay. They're even in Seoul, South Korea. It's a delicious beverage. It's blended, it's sweet, it's bitter, it's caffeine, it's sugar, and it's coconut. Mi Quang is a delicious and colorful Vietnamese noodle dish from the central region, especially Quang Nam province. It is made with wide rice noodles that are cooked with turmeric, giving them a yellow hue. The noodles are topped with various meats such as pork, chicken, shrimp, fish or beef, and hard-boiled quail eggs. The dish is served with a small amount of broth that's rich and flavorful. Mi Quang reflects the history and culture of Vietnam, influenced by traders who came to the port town of Hoi An, and it speaks to the theme of our story diversity and richness of Vietnamese cuisine. All right, we are here at Mi Quang Ba M. So that means like basically the noodle dish, Three Sisters, very traditional dish from the central region around Da Nang, beautiful coastal city. We got the Tom Teet version, which basically means meat, pork meat and shrimp. You can see on bone little riblets, as well as these shell on shrimp. It's a wide, flat noodle almost like a fettuccine. So actually excited to eat this like now. I want to dig right in. Before we do though, let's think about the ticker. 45K, a little under $2. So right now we're at 95K. It's going to be tight. It's going to be very tight, but I think we're on track to beat the McDonald's price out and eat five incredible Vietnamese street food dishes for under the price of a single McDonald's combo. Let's go. First bite. Start with the star, the shrimp. Mmm. Wow. When you leave the carapace, the shell on there, it gets this really incredible textural hit. You're biting right through the exoskeleton and you get a crunch. It's almost like, like popcorn or something, right? It can get stuck in your teeth, but it gives it a toothsomeness that you don't have when you peel the shrimp. Wow. How's that for a noodle pull? Woo. Let's get some of these beautiful greens into this bowl. This looks delicious. Got some basil, some shredded cabbage, a little bit of mint. I don't see any of the notorious fish mint in here. I like it. It's not for everyone though. A lot of foreigners get messed up by it. Hit it with a little bit of lime juice. I'm doing this because I'm related to the Queen of England. True story. Actual fact though, my grandparents worked for the Queen. They were gardeners though. I'm not royalty. Wow, that is hot. This is pickled garlic and chili dish and some vinegar. That's gonna give it an intense pop. I'm excited to try this. Let's stir it up. Mmm. Oh, it's incredible. These noodles, like something in Italian. They have that famous chewiness of the Hoi An noodle. Obviously they didn't import the water from up there, but They've got to be adding something alkaline to the water before they make these. It's very different from what you're usually going to get here in the South. T-R-A-N-G, bang chang. It's nice. It's like a crispy deep fried rice cracker with a little bit of black sesame on it. This is going to give a lot of textural fun to this dish and go with those chewy, springy, thick noodles. That hot sauce, the pickled chili and garlic, is, it gives the dish like a bright pop to it. It doesn't feel as heavy as it could be. Just the thing about these noodle soups, instead of being cream or butter or fat based, unlike an Italian or a Chinese dish, the Vietnamese noodle dishes are light. You can walk away from here and not feel like you got gut punch. We carry on with our glorious journey to take down the evil empire of McDonald's and showcase the five best Vietnamese noodle soups. All right, it's the end of a really long day. Time to reveal our sixth and final coffee. A little special secret for you in the end of our top five. This is what's known as a cafe mui, so it's a salted coffee. To be honest, it's not that traditional. It looks, it's a blended iced coffee drink made with an espresso whipped cream, a little bit of salted caramel. Have a look for yourself. Moment of truth, six coffees deep, an entire day consuming caffeine and sugar. And it's just like home. 
this is like remarkably uncoffee like there's definitely some sort of sugar or syrup in the actual drink blended with the ice getting like a ton of milk product probably my least favorite thing I've had all day it's uh it's not that sweet which is a saving grace but it's also not that coffee -y. it tastes a lot like um Tastes a lot like an iced cappuccino, like you get at Tim Hortons, like direct from the smoothie machine in Canada, which is everyone's summer favorite, but only to fuel your road trip.
một bánh mì thịt chả Bơ bà tê ok không à ok chưa
có đậu xanh luôn Ai cảm 